Hey, look at me, look at me. I'm on a broom, I'm flying around in front of you. Hey, come on, are you not impressed? He is apparently not impressed. How about you two? Look at this, I'm floating. Doesn't that freak you out? Come on. Nobody seems to be impressed by the fact that I'm flying around on a broom. Welcome back, everybody, to Tales of Fantasia, Naughty Kitty Dungeon. In this episode, we are continuing the story, the main story here. So we're going to go ahead and go back to Dio's house and go through this new painting that looks like an angry cloud where the two mysterious, uh, the, the guy and the girl in purple, the two mysterious characters went. So let's see what we have in this new area. This door is still locked. Anything new in here? Nope. Don't mind me, just hovering around. Thought I'd switch it up a bit and have uh, Archie as the lead because it's uh, cool to hover around on a broom. So if you haven't been following the story, the uh, two sort of purple masked mysterious uh, people who I think are different versions of uh, Mel and Dio, maybe like future selves that made poor decisions, they goaded us to coming into this time, uh, this time slip, this time line, whatever it is, but it has question marks, so I don't know what time it is in the actual Asalia timeline. But we're following them. And as we did, Daos has appeared in front of us again. Thought we just beat this guy. But uh, this Daos is acting a little differently. I'm wondering if, like, you know, there's different Daos versions from different timelines. Who knows? Whenever you have something based on time travel, you know, there's always odd things that occur, anomalies that happen. But, of course, this is just a cutscene here to have Daos basically telling us where to go next. He's actually telling us where the two have gone. The uh, two purple masked villains. So it looks like we're going to be heading to the Tower of Flame. I'm trying to remember if this was an actual dungeon in Fantasia. I think it is. Uh, most of the places we visited you know, in this game up to this point have been, you know, some of the classic areas. So, yeah, here we are in almost like a dead, a dead world version. Hmm. Got two places we can go. I'm just going to go ahead and follow the storyline, I think, here. Yeah, there's no towns, there's no people. Mel says it seems like a really creepy place. <laughs> Do they, are you scared? No, I'm not scared. It's like, yeah, you were scared when you had to go to the toilet by yourself. It's like, no, that was Mel that was afraid when she had to go to the toilet. Like, no, Mel was afraid of other things. Embarrassing childhood moments. So yeah, I'm not sure what exactly the timeline is here for this place. But it seems there are no towns and villages and no people. So it's probably just after the Great War with the uh, Daos. And the land was, you know, kind of left in ruin and chaos. Waste. The land was wasted away. Mel. 
All right, let's go. Let's check out this new dungeon. I'm excited. Glad there's more to this game because I was going to be disappointed if it was over. Mel says, if we were home now, I'd be having a bath. And Dio says, yeah, and I'd be reading a book right about now. They're, you know, they're kind of not too happy to be going on this quest. They'd rather be at home. But Etos cheers them up, saying that they'll be home soon. You know, by this time tomorrow, everything will be okay. All right, like that positive thinking. Positive thinking is always a good thing. So just for fun, I'm trying up some new costumes here. Uh, Dio is on the Kani costume, and Mel is on her uh, red version of Chun Li, a Street Fighter character costume. I'm probably gonna have to like start mixing up the costumes more here because I'm not sure how many dungeons are left in this game, and I'm afraid I won't be able to show off all the costumes. So let me go ahead and quickly grab the dead ends of this area. And we'll do a couple fights, of course, to show off the costumes. Red uh, Chun Li style costume was really fun, actually. Mel, it's similar to other hand-to-hand -hand combat costumes, just with uh, you know a few extra skills. And for some reason, I'm not sure, but the uh, battle camera keeps getting switched on me. I'm not sure if I'm hitting like a hotkey or something, but for some reason it's on party and. I think I prefer it on target A. I'm not sure why it's getting changed. I think there's like a hotkey that you can press, like L2 or R2, uh, in the in the battle that maybe I'm accidentally pressing and I'm switching it up. Kani no kimochi. What does it feel to be a Kani? Kani. have a skit here it looks like a Dio Dio's talking about what it's like to be a crab in his uh, Kani costume <laughs> it's like this Kani costume it's you know I can't stand it Mel thinks it's super cute He's like it's not cute it's hard to move I like I can only move sideways I can't move forward so he's sort of waddling back and forth there and saying it's useless, but uh, Mel says it's actually quite useful because uh, it has good points because Kani has a really strong shell so rather than avoiding tacking he can just run in there and you know fight the enemies to a pulp because he has super high uh, resistance so Mel thinking positive again but yeah, he can't stand the way it walks Kani Kani. Doko Kani. Okay, that was a Japanese pun there. We got a title. There was a pretty bad uh, Japanese play on word jokes there. Uh, 
Uh, Japanese puns are one of the more uh, fun and entertaining parts of the Japanese language, actually. So let's cook some Mabo Kare soup. And I think I'm going to start using the holy bottles for a while here, just for exploration purposes. You know, this will help us speed things up. Uh, there's a bunch of pine gummies there. And I maxed out, so I suppose I can leave them. Waste not, want not. But yeah, having the fights kind of break up the exploration um, can be a little annoying, so I'm going to go ahead and quickly uh, explore all the dead ends of the uh, dungeon here. And then maybe we'll show off some more fights, some more enemies, and then we'll have a showdown with whatever boss is here. Don't actually remember what boss is in this place. But yeah, let's go ahead and explore the dungeon. I'm noticing the dungeons now have these long, long corridors that you have to walk down to force you to... It's a warp there, that's interesting. Uh, force you, you know, into fighting lots of enemies. Great, I just found all the dead ends with nothing in them. So I'm going to keep popping these holy bottles uh, every so often so that I can explore the map better. So just quickly looking at all the dead ends here on the first floor and then uh, we'll go ahead and take one of these blue routes or staircases to different sections up and down. I guess before I go I'm going to quickly uh, grab that chest I missed. It was full of pine gummies. Pine gummies. Okay, rather than force you to watch me go all the way back over there, I just made a cut. And uh, I just wanted to grab all the gummies in that chest. To be thorough, before I leave it behind and I forget it's there. Got to open all the chests, right? Wow, yeah, this, this area is pretty big. Probably gonna run out of these holy bottles, but for exploration purposes, we trek on. Checking all the dead ends that have absolutely nothing of use in them. Oh, oh, yikes, we have lava on the floor here that is damaging. <laughs> Some commentary here on the hot floor and how we need to be careful where we step. I'm gonna see what this red enemy is. A lot of times the red enemies are unique uh, enemies for the dungeon that need to be scanned. Ow, stop it! Uh. All right, that does it. So satisfying. Do not mess with Mel. I think that's the first time I've done the He Ogi. I'm thinking I might make a video showing all of the he ogies in the game, but um, some of them are costume specific, and that's the one for Mel's kind of that hand-to-hand -hand combat costume. Now, all these dead ends, they've got like uh, gummies that I already have maxed out my inventory, and they're like sitting right on top of the lava. Just to force me to take damage. Forced damage. You know I hate it. Probably better put another uh, 
fully bottle on here before something bad happens. You know, you'd think with, uh, I'm floating around on this uh, broomstick with Archie, you'd think that the lava wouldn't bother me since I'm hovering in the air. It's like, how is she taking damage? I'm like floating above the air. Or floating above the, uh, not floating above the air. The floating above the ground. So none of this lava should affect Archie at all. But apparently I still take damage. A paralyzed check. And he's gonna run away from me. Come back here. Come on. Come on. Oh, never mind. Fine. If he's gonna hang around on the lava bed, I'll just skip him. Alright, a quick save there, and we're going to continue on up. 3A. Wow, this place is pretty big. Got a lot of sections. Uh, hopefully we can get to the boss, and we'll have an epic boss fight in this episode. Depends on how long this dungeon is. That was a Mimic. So for your reference, don't open that treasure chest. It's a fake. Yeah, a lot of these are ridiculously long hauls. I think I'm, I don't know if I'm going the main way here, or this is just like a side section with a bunch of dead ends and treasure chests. So I, look, I think I saw a different one down here in the corner, kind of hidden. Aha! Uh -huh. Developers, they like to hide the chests in this game. Being all sneaky and everything. I see through you. See your treasure chest hidden behind the wall. It kind of would have been nice to have like a way to sort of rotate, maybe rotate the map in this game, but maybe then it would have been too easy to see, you know, the treasure chests that are hidden behind the walls. That weapon name was Eros. Er Eros. I didn't think this game had erotic stuff in it, but apparently it does. I noticed, like, when you're moving around with Archie, there's this kind of funny hovering uh, sound effect going. That's not the game. Well, it is the game, but it's actually, you know, not anything in the dungeon or anything. It's it's the sort of a sound effect of Archie hovering around. This is kind of a suspicious area. There's the giant statues, a save point, and a red enemy. Can't do anything with the statue. Okay, bring it on. Usually these red enemies are good to fight uh, because they're usually unique, unique ones to the dungeon, and you need them for the bestiary book. Save point here. Guess I'll save. 
cook some mabo kare soup. Alrighty, I went ahead and made a cut there because that was all a dead end and so I backtracked to this other section here. Just want to be kind of thorough in the playthrough and show you guys the full dungeon, all the chests, especially if I run across uh, costumes. Uh, I'm planning on getting all the costumes in the game and showing them all, including the special ones. So the special ones are going to be a lot of fun to uh, show off. Kind of like the crab one. The crab is kind of the only special costume I have right now, but uh, I'll be getting a bunch of the other ones too. Some rare mail. More lemon gummies. No. Fine. All right. Let's be efficient. Use these lemon gummies up, and then, and then I can loot the chest and waste not, want not. Yeah, I'll make some cuts as I'm traveling here, so you guys don't have to watch all my backtracking through these massive areas. Okay, so that was all the center area. I didn't find any good costumes, sadly. So we're back in the main hub. And just trying some of these side rooms. <laughs> I guess I should have checked this area first. Because it was a dead end with some goodies in it. Okay, so that's the middle one. And the upper left corner there. Let's check this uh, portal here. Goes to a mystery room. Interesting. Just about out of holy bottles here. Hmm, it doesn't move. We can't go here yet. Alright. So I'll definitely be showing off uh, how to get in there when we can get in there. Maybe that's where the boss is, I don't know, we'll see. Okay, just one more section to go here. This uh, lower right corner blue door. Yeah, I don't know, this place is getting pretty long, so... I may have to do what I've done in the past, and uh, when I get to a save point here, I'll probably go ahead and uh, take a break. And then uh, in the next episode, we'll continue on, continue the dungeon, and attack symbol. Uh, we'll, we'll continue the dungeon from that point and then fight the boss. It's more exciting that way, right? Because then we start the episode off with an epic boss fight. Wow, yeah, this this place is a uh, I think a little too big for this episode. I don't think we'll be able to get to the boss, guys. I'll probably uh, have the next episode finishing up this uh, dungeon, and uh, then we'll fight the boss in the next one. So let's just quickly explore the rest of this floor and then save our game and then go to the kitchen and have some nice uh, atakai miso shiro. Kana. Although with the save point there, I'm, I'm wondering if we're close or if that's just like a halfway point. Down to one holy bottle. Let's just check these dead ends right quick. Some money. Always good to have, I suppose. Especially since I have to buy that miso in this game. The most expensive item so far you can 
purchase. A miracle, Gumi. It's a miracle. Come here. Come here. You have to shoot those guys with the sorcery ring. All right, everybody, it looks like there's quite a bit left to go. So we'll go ahead and uh, end this episode. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you all in the next one where we take on the boss of this tower.